I'm repeating what you said, riding a tail of a comet. Uh, That's where you were. I'm picking up where you left off. Elvis was the most dynamic, extraordinary entertainer that ever happened. And after all these years, he's the most beloved star. In fact, this week, there will be 100,000 people going to Graceland just to go up to his grave, say hello, get that feeling, get that connection. And... I, I saw this here for 10 movies, concerts, public experiences, and the last time I did this here was for a few. So, more books, more records and albums have been sold by Elvis Presley than anyone who ever recorded. He's still the, that's why he's the king. That's right. Number one. Highest paid actor in the 60s. This movie's gross more movies than any other movie in the 60s. So it's a phenomenon is what it is. And, uh, yeah, after all these years, he has more fans in clubs around the world than any living celebrity today. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. That's why it's a phenomenon. So, so tell us about the last time that you saw him. I mean, not at the, I would say at the funeral. <laughs> well, I was at Zach Raceland and we had to go on tour. I gave him a book to read. Several hours later, he was reading the book. Massive heart, massive heart. Wow. Oh, so you basically like gave him his last message. Well, he was reading about the Holy Shroud of Turin. Wow, really? Yeah, exactly. Right before he passed, huh? That was it. That is amazing. It is amazing. That is amazing. And, you know, there are church, there's Elvis, Elvis churches around the world. It's really something else. I have a little bit of Elvis Church at my house. You know, I got some souvenirs and some CDs, and and I was a fan myself. So, um, what was the card? Were, were you on tour with him, or uh, <laughs> major events, or you name it? It was 24 hours a day. I mean, working for Elvis. I mean, that's it. So, were you at the last concert, which was the Scotty Moore concert? I, I was. No, Scotty was. Scotty. Uh, <laughs> The spirit of Elvis compels you. Exactly. <laughs> Power. Uh, Scotty stopped working for Elvis back in '57. In, in all the Vegas years, Scotty was not the drummer. But Ronnie Tucker. So, so, okay, my mistake. Who was it? Who, who was, oh, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, so at the last gig, who was, who was there? My mistake. Oh, D, uh, DJ and Scotty were Elvis' backup in the 50s. Right. DJ was the drummer, Scotty was the drummer. Right James Burton, the great James Burton, who played with everyone, from Bruce Springsteen, everyone. Roy Orbison, but he was Elvis's main guitar player. Right on, right on. Well, he, uh, James lives somewhere right around here. Very cool. Yeah. So, so you got to see the greatest people in the world perform on a nightly basis. I mean, how was that? Not like extraordinary, extraordinary. Yeah. Elvis, I, I opened the very first salon for men's hairstyle with another gentleman back in 1960. And at that time, guys went to barbershops. And wow. we opened our doors. Our clientele was Frank Sinatra, Marlon Brando, You're not leaving. Paul Newman, Rock Hudson, wow. Warren Beatty, oh, Newman. Steve McQueen. He named the star of motion pictures or TV or recording that came to us. In 64 is when I met Elvis. And I've been with every star on the planet. No one looked as extraordinary as Elvis. 
That's absolutely correct. And that's because of you, obviously. So, what, how was Elvis about having his hair worked on? I mean, what, was he like every a day. He or was it you? He had a beautiful head of hair. Yeah. A full head of hair. But it was very fine. So, when we made movies, as an example, I would have to uh, blow dry his hair three, four, five times a day because his hair would fall, and I'd spray it and make sure it was match. But he was so easy to work for. Extraordinary. Right on. Okay, and so uh, you must have hung out with Annette Funicello a little bit too, huh? Uh, she came around. She came out the set a few times. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right.